In the middle of Missouri, a farming and trading tribe was known as the Aracaras or Spanish. Around 2,500 people lived in two Aracaras settlements that dominated a Missouri bend in 1823. There were earth lodges made of logs that were covered in willow and compacted dirt inside the palisades. What happened in the Aracaras settlement? What did General Ashley face? The two Aracaras settlements together formed a fortified Native American trading center that controlled movement along the river. On May 30, Ashley anchored his keelboats in the middle of the towns to make it appear that he wanted to negotiate and conduct business, not engage in combat. Ashley got out of his keelboat and walked ashore to talk to the Aracuras, who demanded payment for several dead warriors who had recently been involved in battles with another fur trading organization. He gave them gifts and exchanged 19 horses for 25 muskets and ammunition. Jadivia Smith was given leadership of 40 soldiers on shore to drive the horse herd to Fort Henry, when Ashley divided his army into two groups which were a river group and an overland party. The two keelboats were anchored 30 yards offshore, and the boatmen remained on board, preparing to go upriver the following day. Erikura had informed Ashley that some of the villagers' warriors intended to attack the Americans, either right there in the villages or later on the wide prairie. When the wind died down, Ashley decidedly made her ground and left. To inform the shore party of Stephen's murder, Edward Rose ran onto the beach, and Erikara announced to people camped on the beach before morning that he would enter the hamlet and bring Stephen's body out for the cost of one horse. Each of the two keelboats had a rowboat or skiff nearby as they were still moored in Missouri's rapid current. Ashley then ordered the keelboats to approach the beach, but his boatman remained anchored and at first showed no signs of moving. Ashley's two skiffs headed for the shore while one keelboat became stuck on a sandbar, drawing a lot of fire from the hamlet. As they approached the beach from behind the wall and with the certainty of triumph, the Aracoras, Ashley's crew managed to remove their keelboat from the sandbar, float downstream in the current, and cut the anchor rope for the other keelboat so that they could also be carried by the current. The Ashley men attempted to reassemble, gather stragglers, and bury those whose bones they uncovered in the shock of their defeat on the beach and the expedition being pursued back down the river. Many of Ashley's men rejected the idea of arming the boats with wooden planks to force passage past the Aracara as soon as possible. One keelboat was sent downriver to St. Louis, carrying the injured and people who were fed up with the western fur trade. To assemble more soldiers downstream to support Ashley's remaining forces, Jedediah Smith and an unnamed French-Canadian traveled overland to Andrew Henry at the Yellowstone River mouth. 230 officers and soldiers of the United States 6th Infantry were led to the Aracora villages by Colonel Henry Leavenworth, after he had been persuaded and organized. For the first time, the U.S. Army sent soldiers west of the Mississippi to fight Indians. Before arriving at the Aracuras, Atkinson commanded a mixed force of Army troops, 50 volunteers from the Missouri Fur Company, 80 more volunteers from Ashley and Henry's combined company, and 500 Lakota horsemen, totaling around 900 commands. Hugh Glass did not go back to the communities to seek retribution because he was still recovering from his initial encounter with the Aracoras. The fighting ceased on August 10 after a day and a half of skirmishing, probing attacks and exhausting the majority of the ammunition for two cannons and a bar of mortar. Rehook, what's awaiting them? Will they face a series of unfortunate events? Even though his officers begged for the opportunity to storm the settlement, he chose to negotiate with the Aracoras. Leavenworth negotiated peace with the Aracara leadership over opposition from people who believed the Aracoras had not received appropriate punishment for killing Americans. After agreeing to Leavenworth's conditions, they slyly fled their towns during the night. When Leavenworth declared victory and gave the order for his forces to return to Fort Atkinson, they noticed smoke rising behind them. Employees of the Missouri Fur Company had lit the vacant town on fire in defiance of Leavenworth's orders. Without a settlement, the Aracuras spent the following years relocating frequently, coexisting with various tribes and assassinating American trappers wherever they could. Ashley and Henry left for Fort Kiowa downriver, exchanging some of his stored items for horses. In August 1823, Hugh Glass left with Henry's 30 men and six pack horses after he had recovered enough. The clash at Aracura turned out to be the first of Glass' numerous close calls with death while climbing mountains. Ashley came back to St. Louis, his political obligations, and his debtors. 
Ashley realized his repeated financial gambles might pay off if he could feed his trappers in the mountains and get the furs back to St. Louis when the news finally reached him from the highlands in the summer of 1824. His plan for getting supplies into the field and furs outgrew into the yearly trappers' gathering that helped to find the mountain man era. Do you think the Arakuras were dangerous? Have you ever heard about them? Let us know in the comments.